brothers get at the sun, first thing they do, Allah, you all know. And we all run into the air to find out they were wrong. And now they just made everybody else wrong. So now we have to be careful about who it is that we allow into our sight. Knowing brothers is one thing, but walking with them and understanding who they are is totally something different. I heard a guard one day and had a rally, asked a young guard, how you see today is the great. The guard stumbled on the degree. Instead of taking the brother off to the side and building with him, he embarrassed him right there in front of everybody. In front of his partners in that little about build up. So I said to myself, what the older guard don't know is that he just made eight enemies. Right. Eight enemies by embarrassing that one guard. Right. So now I stand there and I watch him step up and defend the guard. Step up and defend the bar. I say, yeah, they're going to hate you forever. It's going to be hard to live that down. Why? Because this is a team that eat together. That's the word I was going to say. I don't want you to misunderstand it. Pray together. Pray together. That's the things that we do with our hands. Not just our hands. The things we do with our hands. When we get out here in the world and we want to be quick and fast. I'll tell your story. I went into a video shop one day, up in Harlem. I, I'm not going for me, I'm going with another brother. One of my older brothers. I walk in, I'm looking at some movies, and the owner's in front of me, he's talking to me, I'm talking to him. I'm a people person, so I like to talk. And then when I glance over my shoulder, I see this brother sticking stuff in his pocket. When I get ready to leave, the, the African tells me, I like you, but you're not allowed in my store anymore. Right over here. What you talking you about? Yo, your thought you still in video. Get outside to your guard. I would have brought those for you. We do not sell our name like that. We do not sell our name, and that's what it is. When you decide to deal with devilishment, you put your name on the table here. It don't mean nothing. It does mean something. When you say you're a member of the nation of guards and earth, or a father center, you represent all of us. We're supposed to put our best foot forward at all times. Not just dealing with each other, but dealing with the world. Dealing with the world. We're supposed to be just and true with everybody you deal with. But we tend to want to be just and true. This is my man. I'm just and true to him. You I barely know, you gonna get beat. But we don't do that. We don't do that. The measure of a man is in his heart. It's in his heart. I don't care what you do up here. What you got down here? What you got down here? Now that same young guard that the old guard went off on, one of his partners said, no guard. How about asking the brother, did he have anything to eat? And he said, I don't give a F if he has something to eat. And then we tell his big lie. We love each other. We love each other. I learned something recently that was, to me, it was awesome because I claim born and raised in Virginia. I claim the South. I claim the South. I'm home in the South. I love being down there. I love being with the dogs down there. Hospitality different. I said that to one of my older brothers, and he said, Have you ever noticed in the South? You walk in the person's house, the first thing they ask you is, would you like something to eat? In the north, the first thing they ask you is, you want a drink? Where the balance in that? Where the balance in that? Feed me. As a young kid, we learned that you don't drink on an empty stomach. The first thing you offer me is something to throw me off balance? No, offer me some nourishment. Offer me something that's going to help me survive just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. If we cared about each other enough like that, then we will understand that Allah is truly the all in all. Not just one of us. All of us. When we understand that, not everybody's important. Everybody plays a role. There are no expendable people. None. Not the 85, not the Caucasian, none of them are expensive. That's use of square miles. And we have to be able to learn how to use it. Put it to work for us. The Caucasian will see swampland, we will say, oh, that swampland is sort of a perfect. That's six million square miles. He 
he's going to come out there and put pegs in the ground and put a house on top of it. Now, we're looking at him. Murder Avenue, prime example. Prime example. Used to be black neighborhood. That's what I grew up in. I grew up on Murder and Charmfield. It was black neighborhood. That ain't anymore. That ain't anymore. We used to play in the abandoned building like they had no value. These were playhouses. They are real houses now. The Jews that came over here and said, oh, look at this, nobody using that. Let's put some homes in there, and the factories that we used to run wild in. So we have plenty of examples of how to build constructive but we don't want to take it. We think we're the supreme being without recognizing anybody else. No, you have to recognize everybody else. Long time ago, we learned in order to know what you have on your left hand is good, you have to have something on your right. That's the scale of justice. That's the scale of justice. You have to be able to weigh things out, make analysis, make analysis. So, yes, we need to get to know one another. Now, this should be new to anybody here. Every first Sunday in the desert is a rally, every second Sunday at Medina is a rally. People are starting to pick up their pace and start going to their rallies again. So we have a rally every weekend, somewhere to go to get to know your brother. You want to build in a cypher, but you don't want to step out into a mad cypher? Go to the community rallies, where it's family units. Then you get to sit down, everybody in there, you look around, that true? We know everybody, right? Everybody that comes in there, we know. If somebody that comes in the door hasn't been there in a while, we know that too. Why? We're there all the time. We're there all the time. So we get to meet people. We travel just to meet people. Meet gods and earth. A couple of weeks ago, those of y'all passed one to 36. I went into Virginia, Richmond. They had their conference. We went into the conference. The conference was for well, a whole weekend. A god out there named I am Burn. He took us on a tour, and I call it the slave tour, where he was showing us where the slaves, where they first came in on the ship. He showed us where Willie Lynch made his speech. A lot of us say Willie Lynch wasn't real, but if the effect is real, then the cause has to be real. He showed us where they made that speech, then he showed us something else. Lumpkin's Acre, a place called Lumpkin's Acre. Willie Lynch only came. He's gone. Willie Lynch only came into play because Lumpkin was a slave trainer. His job was to break slaves, and he was the best at it. He was the best at it. When you went into Lumpkin's prison, you may not have made it out, you may, but you will be an example of other slaves. So then they came up with the idea: hey, let's do it this way. Let's do a psychology. Let's play with their heads a little bit. They brought Willie Lynch in. Okay, we're gonna play a different game here. We ain't gonna beat them anymore. Why? We lose losing merchandise like that. This is all things that we learned on the tour out there, and now we that, we found something else out there. It's called, they call it the slave, we call it the slave burial ground. They call it Lumpkins archaeological site. They didn't even want to call it a burial ground. Mm -hmm. All they did was bury slaves in this area. Now, the trick to this game that they played was Virginia High School was right across the street. Anytime they wanted cadavers, they'd go across the street to the graveyard, dig the bodies up, bring them back in there and work on the bodies. Peace. 1980, they found out that they had a plumbing problem. They started digging up the area to find out what was blocking the sewage lines. Black bodies. The parts that they didn't use, they threw them in a the well. They started blocking up the sewage. Now that's the one in 36 coming to life. When the guard took us on this tour and we're looking, I go every time I go to the conference out there. And I go on the tour every time. And I am amazed at everything we see. The slave market, where they sold the first slave, still in place. 
the bell that they rang, like the stock market, and they were selling stocks, is still in place. I learned something about another group. We're going to leave the name out of it. But it's about a red flag. Our brothers wear red flags hanging from their pockets. We get out there and we find out that the red flag had a different meaning. They hung the red flag up every time they were selling slaves. They're hanging up outside the door. So you know if you go in the basement, you can buy slaves. They have all kind of indications on selling us. Right across from the slave market, you look at the state office building. And the number on the state office building is 1555. Wow. Yes, that's what we said. Wow. But then we seen something else that was, whoa, where the numbers picked up in the 1600s and they skipped a whole hundred just so they could get that building at 1555. So that told me they knew exactly what they were doing.